Hey everybody, thanks for being with us and welcome to Tips from the Top, where we interview the experts in doTERRA and online business so that you can learn from the best. Today we have an awesome interview lined up with Neil Anderson. Neil is a doTERRA diamond out in North Carolina with his wife, Erin. But in addition to having that experience to really share with us, Neil is also an expert in sharing products, leading teams, and inspiring people to grow their business. Um, he's had clients ranging from Super Bowl champions to top producing sales leaders from various industries and backgrounds, and really has a ton of knowledge that, that he can share with us. We asked him to be on the show today to talk to us about the skills in sharing doTERRA. So without further ado, welcome Neil Anderson. Hey, Neil, thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, thanks a lot, Jordan. It's great to be here. So, Neil, from our conversations, um, it's come to my attention that you've pretty much sold and presented products of all different kinds in all different ways, whether it be on the phone, door to door, um, to a business or corporation, or or to just a uh, just to a individual. And from that experience, you you have immense stores of knowledge that that you can help us and all wellness advocates out there learn how to be more effective in their business. So tell me, take us through a little bit what your history looks like, what your experience, where your experience is coming from and how that's helped you in your current pursuits. Uh, Well, yeah, you're going to take me down memory lane a little bit. I went out and knocked on doors uh, when I was uh, a college student and also did it all the way through law school to pay my way through school, as did my wife, who is the um, kind of running the ship here uh, at, you know, uh, Team Pure Healthy Essentials here in, in North Carolina. Um, but we went out and, you know, for 80 to 90 hours a week, we knocked on doors, you know, running between houses, you know, having a great attitude, doing 30 demos a day. And I talk to business owners, I say, you know, if your salespeople could do 30 demos in a month, would that be good, right? So we were doing these demos uh, just like crazy and, you know, learning about human nature, learning about ourselves, obviously. And, um, you know, it was a great way to, to, to earn some money for school uh, and, and quite a bit. It, it freed us up during the school year to be able to, you know, be students. And, um, but also to learn human nature and to learn what makes people tick, but even more important, why people don't tick. Um, so, you know, I did that for, for six, uh, six summers. And, um, and then, you know, from that was sitting for the bar and, uh, somebody had, had, uh, recruited me a headhunter, uh, to, uh, to take this job with a legal publisher. And, uh, I looked at that and what they were going to pay. And I wasn't locked in on wanting to practice law at that point. And um, I said, well, sure, I'll do that. And I did that for a while and actually was able to, to, um, to go to sell very high-end real estate at a private retreat down off the coast of Georgia, which was working with, um, you know, high net worth folks that were looking for a place to get away. And that was a phenomenal uh, experience. And then um, did some other work with scaling uh, some direct sale uh, products. And then um, my heart was always in helping people develop um, personally, emotionally, spiritually, um, to just, and if I had to put it in a sentence, to just have more significance and to have more profitability in their lives. And one of the things that I found, and, and let me just um, finish kind of where that went. And, and so I, I eventually got into um, doing one-on-one uh, coaching with top producing salespeople, um, sales VPs, managers uh, nationwide, and, um, you know, and some of those were, uh, uh, I mean, all of them were amazing experiences with some, some very unique uh, individuals with, with specific backgrounds. And, um, and one of the things that I noticed was in my walk through this whole thing, whether it was uh, a mom sitting on a picnic bench outside of a trailer in Texas, or it was, um, you know, a guy who I worked with that, you know, 
had the good fortune to win a couple of Super Bowls, um, is that people either had a lot of significance in their life, you know, they, they loved kind of what they did um, and, and, and why they did it, but the problem was they were broke. You know, they didn't have any, there was, there was too much month uh, at, at the end of the money, and it just mm-hmm. wasn't working out, right? Um, and then the other uh, group, which seemed to be more and more prevalent, was people that had a lot of money, right, and a lot of things and a lot of stuff. They just didn't have any significance in their life. Um, or if they did, it was on short spells. You know, it was, it was a, a one-week vacation, and maybe two of those days they actually felt like they were on vacation. Um, and I just kind of made a, a, a commitment that I said, you know, I know this is where God's got it on my life to help people increase their significance and profitability, and that's what my calling is. And I need to go do that. Um, and I need to go, uh, go help people and whatever it takes, I got to make that happen. Um, and, uh, you know, I ended up, uh, you know, being able to do that through, through coaching and some other things. And, uh, you know, all along the way, uh, I have just learned that people are craving for a way to get their message, their calling, their, their thing out there. And our hardest job, the biggest obstacle people face is how do I get an audience? You know, I have these great oils. I have this great airplane. I have this great, you know, financial product or this life insurance policy. But how can I get somebody just to sit down with me and listen? I've got a great story. But the problem is people don't know people well enough. And they don't know themselves well enough to communicate in a way where people get excited and then want you to go talk to all their friends. Neil, on, on behalf of all those that are listening, um, I'm sure they hear that and they say, okay, all right, Neil, you, you've got me buying in on this. I'm, I, I want an audience. I, I feel like I've got an outstanding product um, with these CPTG essential oils. Well, what, what do you teach? How, how does somebody get an audience? How, how does, what does that look like? Well, it depends what you're, what you're doing. And, um, you know, you, the first thing you have to understand is, is who is the ideal, um, the ideal customer? Obviously, you already, if you already have a product or a service, but what's the ideal person to talk to, right? Who am I passionate about talking to? You know, the great thing about doTERRA, and you're going to hear me say that a lot because there's so many great things, is there are so many avenues and so many rabbit trails that you can go down. If you love chiropractic, you can go down that market. If you love working with health coaches or you love working with single moms, you love working with, um, uh, you know, moms that are in the, in the birthing phase, whatever it is, there are enough people out there to be able to start that niche and go do it and, and have an ideal customer for you that, that you feel that you are using all the gifts that you have to be able to go out there and, um, uh, and serve them. Now, that being said, the first thing that you have to do is you have to figure out the difference that you can make in other people's lives. And a lot of talk about, you know, your why and all that. And, you know, having your why is a luxury. It's not a necessity. Um, You know, I I don't know if I had a why to go out and knock on doors 80, 90 hours a week, right? Um, It was because of what I committed to do, and I wasn't going to quit. And I knew that if I focused on on the answer line behind the next door, um, and I knew that that was true, and I learned that along the way, that great things were going to happen. I didn't have to have this great picture that I have about life right now when I was doing that. So I think if you can focus on the difference that you're making in other people's lives and keep that in front of you, and also get clear on some of the things that you want, but it's not all about you. It's about what do other people want and they need. So a lot of people focus on in life, what do I, you know, what do I want to do? What's my passion? And, and I'll say it's not about you. It's about other people and what do they need? And, you know, I would go into these poor neighborhoods and these, you know, I, I, I was selling in, you know, Mississippi, Alabama, way out in the country. And what got me through was the fact that if I don't show up at that house and they don't see a college student, some of these families had never seen somebody that went to college before except their teacher. And I felt that if nothing at all, that they were able to see somebody that had a good attitude, that worked hard that was out there facing their fears. And that was sometimes the best education they bought better than if they ever bought books or not. But I was focused on the difference that I could make in someone's life. And that's pretty easy with doTERRA. The next thing that I'd say you have to do is you have to get really, really clear on your schedule. 
And you have to realize that time management does not exist because as much as you want to, you cannot look at the clock and stop it. At least I don't know anybody that can do that. <laughs> so uh, you've got to realize that, um, that you have to figure out how you utilize your time. And then an exercise I do on our share lead program is I take people through a 168 hour exercise and I basically put in front of them compounded over 10 or 20 year period how much that's actually costing them in time and in money to do that. So for instance, you know, you watch three hours of TV a week, may not sound like a lot, but let's compound that over 20 years. You know, that may be like nine 40 hour work weeks, 48 weeks a year of watching television. Right? Uh -huh. So the question then is, number one, we're all accountable at the end for what we're doing, but what could be impacted if you change that and you, you sacrificed that TV time for doing something like helping out with a cause that you feel is important. And so many of us at doTERRA, we feel the cause is just giving people um, affordable, safe tools in the house that can empower people as a first line of defense, right? That's huge for people. And a lot of times that's all they need. You know, back in the day when, when I was growing up, um, you know, you didn't have to have a purpose or feel good. Right? You just did it because it was work, and you just went and you went and did the work. Um, I don't ever look at doTERRA as work, so I think we've got kind of an edge, but you have to utilize your time in a, in a point where you know exactly what you're doing, and you realize that if you want to make six figures, that's $52 an hour. So if you decide you want to go to Starbucks, and that takes you, by the time you stop an activity and start one, and that takes you an hour, let's say, so you may say, well, I spent four bucks on that latte, which is a bargain if you've been to Starbucks. Um, but uh, uh, it's, it's four dollars, right? Or even if you get a tea or a drink there, it's four dollars. But it actually costs you fifty six dollars for that. So when you look at it, it's the fact that when you're thinking about should I turn into this chiropractor's office and knock on his or her door? Or should I pick up the phone and go uh, coach somebody? Right. Or should I go to Starbucks and think about going out and doing these things, right? Maybe if I think a little bit more and do some more work in my back office, I'll feel like doing the activities I don't want to do. That now you're going, that just cost me $56, right? And the problem is until people get clear on their schedule, then they'll never be as significant as they could be in life. So let me ask you this. Um, when it comes to utilizing your time, is – a majority of that effort focusing on finding waste and eliminating it? Is that what you've seen in your experience? Well, it's kind of both, right? Because what I want to do in that, there's a lot of exercises where people write down all the things they do for, you know, a week or two, right? Kind of like with the diet, you know, you want a diet, so you write down all your stuff. I'm saying, let's create the ideal 168 hours of your week. And if you're, if, if you say, well, you know, right now I'm not doing, 30 minutes of inspirational reading in the morning, but I want to, well, let's just act as if you are 30 minutes a day, seven times a week. You do the math. That's you put that down, subtract that for 168. And this is how much time you have left. So I think if we spend more time on the things that we want to do, right. And just have a strategy to make sure that that happens and have some accountability folks, then you can overcome some of the negative ones. I mean, you just have to have that clear picture of where you want to be and then once you've compounded it, a great book is The Compound Effect. Um, and uh, uh, you, you take whatever it is and you just do it over 10 or 20 years. And you say, in 20 years, look what I could have had. And most of the people tell me, uh, I don't have enough time. I don't have time to do a class or I don't have time to build or I don't have time to, to do X, Y, and Z. And a great thing to be able to do is say, well, tell me about that. And once they start telling you about it, say, well, have you ever done the 168 hour exercise? When they say no, say, well, let's do that for a few minutes. And they will get more clear than they've probably ever been in their life. Once they lay that out and you coach them through and coaching, unlike mentoring is the answers are totally inside and you are providing a way for them to get from point A to point B and you're not going to take their, you know what? Mm -hmm. And the time is the biggest thing. And from all of the thousands of coaching hours that I have, that is the number one thing. I don't care if it's from a world-class athlete to, you know, to a, to a mom or a dad that's just trying to, you know, pay for their oils. It's time. When someone comes to you, um, a wellness advocate, and they're saying, all right, Neil, um, I want you to coach me how I can be more successful. 
when you after after you've taught them about focusing on the difference that they can make and utilizing their time, what what's the next step? Where do they go from there? Well, it's interesting because uh, everybody's different, <laughs> and, and if you don't know that now, everybody will say they're different. Um, and a lot of times we're the same. So the reason I say that is is we have to oftentimes customize it. But what I'm doing right now is more group. Um, you know, the calls that we're doing are, are obviously in a group. Uh, the, the next thing that they need to do after we get that started is they have to learn the cycle of the share and they need to learn the 12 keys to master sharing, right? And, and in those, some of those things are, um, you know, uh, what do we do to get a customer, right? Or to get in front of somebody, getting that audience, right? Um, and that's what I call, um, you know, just the, the, it's just a, a, an investigate stage where we've got to find out about Jordan such that when I call him, he will take my call because we have enough mutual connections, right? Um, you know, that's like in a referral situation. Um, I have to master how I contact somebody, right? Best way is face-to-face. -face, next way is on the phone, right? Unless they're under 20 years of age, you might text might work well, right? Um, but you have to master that. We want to make sure that you have every strategy, technique, and everything that you can do around um, inviting, um, around sharing, around, um, you know, before the class starts. You know, an 80% of the time should be put in before you show the first oil because people do not buy what you're selling. They buy what you can get them to say. And if they're not talking in the class, you're not selling. So if you were to take one of those 12 steps, one of the skills that you're focusing on, um, give us a sneak peek of what that would look like. Let's do, this is one where, where people have uh, some issues with, but it's one of those where you don't, you may not know that you, you're, you're leaving some enrollments on the table. And this is the point where after we have people that have come to the class and, you know, I, I'm always promoting things that, um, that are obviously things also that I don't uh, take any credit for. And, you know, the, the success system has a great um, four-step process. There's a, you know, Edge Success has one similar. And it's great because, uh, you know, if you do those things, you have the best chance to get people to the class. But we all do a ton of work to get over our fears of inviting and walking up to somebody or just calling a friend or, or Facebooking somebody, um, you know, to, to start an interaction. We set the time aside to get the babysitter, um, you know, to get our husbands on board, right, for, with taking care of the kids, wh whichever, or if the, the roles are reversed. And then all of a sudden, people start showing up. And if you're newer, you're going, oh, my gosh, they actually showed up and you're excited, right? Yeah. And then they come to the class and we're so excited that we jump right in and we skip any edification so we don't have somebody there to build us up to give us credibility, Right. Why do you have this strange person talking to you in this living room? We miss the step uh, of, uh, of exploring, right? So in the cycle of the share, explore is right before teach. And we have to figure out a few things. Number one, we got to find out what is the, the pain or what are the goals. We have to find out what the budget is. We have to find out um, what the process is. What's their buying process? And what's the next step, right? And who the decision maker is. Now, the great thing about doTERRA is the majority of it is a decision that moms are making. Uh, so I'm not saying that it's not important to have dad on board, but most of the moms have told me in my research that all he'll do is get in the way. So as long as I'm not spending a whole lot of money, this is a, de a decision that, that you know, he would obviously trust me on as long as it's something that I would use and the kids, um, you know, would benefit. And, uh, and you know, and, and then dad becomes kind of a closet user where you're, driving down the road and all of a sudden he's jumping in the closet, taking your oils and putting them on and you come home and say, why do you smell like lavender? You know? <laughs> um, but so the point is, is that most people, and I don't care what it is, I've done this so long in so many different industries where people jump right into showing the product because they think the product is what sells. They think the product is what people are buying and, and they're not, not in this sense, right? They may, when you're passed around some deep blue and it helps somebody shoulder right away and that for that one person it can but to get somebody to depart with their hard-earned money um, it takes a lot more and there's a lot more going on so what we have to do is we have to find out things like what is their current situation going on right 
um, which is great if you're using the wellness wish list, which gives you the opportunity to find out what are three health goals that you have, what are um, three um, maybe concerns uh, that you have, right? And you have to have rapport before you ask that. So I wouldn't ask those on an invite sheet when you walk in a house, right? I would ask those in the class after you've been introduced and you have some credibility because most people come in and they aren't going to write down what their health concern is anyway, or they're not going to write down the real one that's, that would cause them to purchase something, right? Especially if it's personal. But we need to find out what is important to them. We need to find out their hopes and dreams. And, you know, why would it, why, um, uh, you, you said your shoulder's been hurting. Um, how long has that been happening? What are the things that it gets in the way of? Right? What do you like to do? You like to play softball. Well, did you play this year? No, I haven't. What's the impact on you? And pretty soon you're going to have people in the room going, oh, that's too bad. And, you know, they want to help you. Right? So the quickest way to build rapport is to have people talk about things that are important to themselves. So we ne you don't need to spend a ton of time. And if you've got a class of 10 or 20 people, um, you're going to spend less time. But even if it's where they do this wellness wish list, or if you want to say, write down, you know, kind of what your goals are on this, what are some things that are getting in the way, what are some things you think you're doing really well, um, but let them get content out there so you can customize the class and you can customize things for exactly what are going on. Because if you can, if you can uncover, right, a need, you're, um, you know, you're a, you're a pretty good salesperson, as they would say. But if you want to be ninja, you have to create needs. And the way you create needs is you find out what's important to people and then you present it in a way where they have anticipation and it builds it up and they go, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And before you've even shown them the oil, they're ready to get involved. Absolutely. I, I've heard that said before and in the way, and you'll have to tell me if it's the same principle, but that when you are say you're you're owning you own a tool company that you're not selling the drill you're selling the hole in the wall you're exactly right yeah people don't go to the store to buy a dewalt drill they want holes right something that also teaches is the different um passion archetypes as far as how people buy and things that get in the way but you do have people that fall in love with the technology right and, and you need to watch out for that because some people just really love delving in research and in the chemist, like Dr. Hill, right? Dr. Hill is probably using doTERRA um, because he loves the chemistry and the science. And yes, it helps him, but he loves that stuff. And if people love that stuff, you still have to know enough to give them that as well. Somebody like me, it would bore me and no disrespect to Dr. Hill, but I just want the great benefits from it because I want to move on to stuff that I love. Neil, you, you brought up earlier about um, coming on as a husband and um, I know your wife, Erin, and uh, both of you have seen amazing success both in this and other business pursuits, but um, kind of take us through the process of when you jumped on to help grow this doTERRA business and what that transition looked like. Well, I need to start off by saying that, you know, we wouldn't be where we are um, without a lot of things, but w without her. Uh, you know, we um, first heard about doTERRA back in 2009 um, from Carrie Sammons, who's a great friend. We worked together in the summer, uh, you know, selling the books, and we were in uh, each other's weddings. Uh, and I met her first, but Aaron... Um, claims that uh, it's her friend, so we always um, kind of squabble about that, but um, she called up one night and just talked about how, uh, her, you know, her son had some some issues, and she used some digestin, and it worked, and he was finally sleeping, and um, the interesting thing is we had kids a little bit before they did, so, um, you know, Carrie would call Aaron and say, okay, what do you do for this, or, you know, how's the cloth diapers working, or those types of things, so they had that relationship in that mothering circle that uh, much like most moms do, you know, they're calling up to find out the best things for, for their kids. And um, in this instance, it was Carrie calling and sharing a great thing, and thank God she did, um, about doTERRA. And, uh, you know, we got a family physician kit, if I remember, it was called a doctor mom kit at the time. And uh, the only thing I said to Aaron was, I'm, I'm behind it if you'll use it. I mean, obviously, just like anything, if it'll help our family and you'll use it, then go ahead and get it. 
So for about two and a half years, we um, we were just avid users. We we, we used the, we took the supplements, um, and we had taken these Tupperware bins and filled them with all the stuff and the, you know the prescriptions and all these different things, um, and put them at the top of the closet because we had young ones around. Um, and what was interesting is, uh, pretty soon we just weren't going there anymore, and we had you know basically made over our medicine cabinet, and um, uh, so about two and a half years pass, and in you know April or May of 2012, Carrie said, "I'm doing this thing called Diamond Club, and I just wanted to see if you were open to maybe having a couple classes down in North Carolina and maybe working on you know getting some oils paid for or even more." And you know, Aaron enthusiastically agreed to do that. It was it was good timing then. It wasn't before, and that's what's great about DoTerra. See, I said it again, is that. We don't start like most network marketing companies with the build stage. We allow people to live the lifestyle and to move to share and then to build rather than we're going to start drawing circles on the wall and you're going to be, you're going to have the Lexus in 30 days. Uh, anyway, um, and Erin just did an unbelievable job like she does at anything she does. She just focused on helping people um, have the same things that we had. And for those that wanted to share it, that's great. And for those that didn't, then let's support them in, in whatever way we can. Um, and, uh, and then she, she went to convention in 2012, came back and told me, gosh, I'd love it if you kind of did this with me. You know, a lot of the people there, you know, had husbands. And, you know, at the time I was thinking, hey, you know, I'm, 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 I didn't say it. I might have thought it like, well, you know, at this point I kind of have a job. And, uh, you know, um, we, that's a night, you know, it's a great thing, but I didn't see what it could be because I wasn't around the people yet. Mm -hmm. And um, so all I did was, you know, supported her. I did some, you know, little sales training and stuff for the team, nothing huge. Um, and then went to leadership uh, retreat 2013. Um, and the, th the interesting thing is, is in August, um, I had started working with some doTERRA folks, um, just coaching them. And, uh, you know, minding my own business, doing my own thing. And then, you know, I see them at the leadership and then, you know, start to, um, you know, get a little bit more involved. And then uh, in the then I ended up going to convention last year. And that was pretty much where I said, um, I really just want to do this. I mean, why am I going out trying to get my own business when I can do this? And I started looking at her back office. You know, I kind of she got me a password. or gave me her password. <laughs> and um <laughs> I started looking and I said, well, you know, what I do for a living is to help people maximize what they have already. And I was like, you know, you have X amount of people. Like, what if we just got them to duplicate? And uh, Aaron was already stretched with kids and everything else. So um, I just, I, I, the light clicked. And I said, and, and as I learned more in my belief level in the company and, you know, and it, it just, it, it happened exactly like it was supposed to happen. I went to Mastermind, which is a thing down in Florida, hung out with more people, had a, an amazing time, and I just made the decision, I'm done, I'm doing this. And um, so basically January of this year was when, um, you know, I, I was, I guess you could call it kind of, you know, full time, and, uh, you know, then started, you know, teaching classes, and, and my wife, I, I'm from upstate New York, and uh, I miss going up there, you know, and I want to snowmobile and ski more. Um, and the great thing about doTERRA, she said, you know, well, we have somebody that just moved from Raleigh up there and, um, you know, Aaron had done a class the previous summer. It's like, why don't you just go do classes up there and kind of build a team? So we've had some great people up there that have, have done some things and, you know, it's, it's been amazing. Um, she did diamond club in, in the spring of 2013 and then, um, she did about 90% of diamond club this time. Uh, and I, it's amazing. Like I have to pinch myself of how cool it is. Cause I get to do everything that I've always wanted to do, you know, developing the people, the significance, the profitability things, but I get to work, um, with my wife. I'm proud of what I do. My kids are proud of what we do. Um, but one of the things that I, I made a decision very, very early. Um, and I'm, I'm a supportive husband. I'm the guy that, you know, when my wife has girls weekends, I'm like, go, oh, you know, I got it. But I said, and this is something for all the, the husbands out there, whether you're involved or not, is that one of the things that can, can uh, hold somebody back, especially a mom, 
is when they have the feeling of I need to go do a class or I need to go, um, you know, teach something or support somebody, but they have this pit in their stomach because they, they're trying to think of the sales talk they're going to tell their husband so he's not mad of having to watch the kids. And I think especially like in Diamond Club, that's the one thing that can make or break the success of, uh, of Diamond Club and even your career in, in doTERRA. So I just made the decision that Erin could go do whatever she needed to do, and she had 100% of my support, and, um, and I was going to make it happen, um, whatever I had to do. And I, I want to say that she never once felt that she shouldn't go on a trip or shouldn't go do something, and I wanted her to f not have to worry about me because there's enough stuff to, to, you know, to be thinking about and juggling as you're out there trying to work with new people and handle objections and have no shows and all that. The last thing I wanted her to do is, you know, and my husband's going to be miserable when he gets home. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't. And the neat thing is, is that um, my relationship with my kids and the things that we got to do, like I was really sad each time when Diamond Club ended. I know the moms and the people that were out there full charge and the guys that were doing it full time, you know, I saw some comment, you know, and it's like, oh, we finally get a breather. But I'm sitting there going, you know, this is a time that I'm never going to have back because we were fortunate enough with all the hard work and the amazing team that we have and everything else to, to achieve Diamond. I don't think they let you do it again. And I'm like, we won't ever get to do that. And it was such a special time in our, um, in our family uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like the last door that I ever knocked on. I'm like, I'm never going to get to do this again. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the, the sentimental down the memory lane for you. Neil, I want to thank you again for taking the time to be with us. I know that you are way busy, busier than, than I could probably ever guess. Um, Jordan, we call it at, at Share, Lead, Inspire, we call it full. We're never going to see any more. We're full. I'm sure you are more than full then. O overflowing. Um, but to finish up, Neil, I, I want you to just have a, have a few minutes to just give a shout out to all of the wellness advocates out there that are listening and are wanting to be more successful in their business. What, what tips would you give them? Um, well, the, again, everybody's kind of in a different stage, but I think the first thing, again, would be get clear on the difference that you can make wherever you are. It doesn't matter if you just signed up. Um, you know, maybe that difference is just being really good right away at putting oils on your family. Um, you know, I would say that you want to connect with um, somebody that's uh, a sponsor, an enroller, somebody that can get you uh, – to duplicate very quickly if that's what you want to do. Um, you need to learn how to use, um, obviously, the products, uh, but you also need to learn how you can help other people experience them. And you don't have to be an expert to teach. Um, I went up to New York and never taught a class before. Now, yes, I've had experience, you know, in people's living rooms presenting. Um, but I just used my story. Um, I knew what their hopes and dreams were because I asked them and we passed around a couple oils and we had people that enrolled. Um, and I think because, you know, we don't have to be the expert, we actually have more credibility. So wherever you are, don't feel like you have to learn more because um, there's enough resources out there for you to be able um, to, to communicate in a way where you at least know the framework. But that's what I think that's the magic of doTERRA is, you know, it's it's kind of a self-help thing where if you can read the alphabet and you can pick up the the, the oil, you can do it. Um, and then I think the other thing is, is that the quicker that you can get over um, uh, the feeling of what people are going to think about you, then you're going to succeed a lot faster in where you want to go. Because in my experience, people are too busy thinking about themselves. They don't have time to think about you. After you may have, the, have had the worst share experience, meaning, you know, at a grocery store, and you handed them the wrong um, bottle of oil or some of it spilled on their – I mean, whatever happened, right? Five minutes later, they forgot you. They even saw you probably, right? Um, so I wouldn't get too concerned with that. Um, and then the other thing is the three principles that you have to do is you have to be totally coachable. You have to work 
your tail off and you have to, um, to, to study really, really hard um, off hours. And then you got to bring people with you because this you can't do it alone. And um, you got to bring people with you because we're on a, we're on the train right now. And this thing is going, um, it's going fast and it's going well. And we want people, the right people uh, with us. And I know people out there have friends that, you know, an extra $200 in their pocket and having great oils to take care of their family would drastically change not only their financial situation, but it would put them around some people that are thinking positively and that are finding a way instead of an excuse. Because there's way too many people out there that, you know, that, that have found themselves making too many excuses. And I think we're all people that, you know, we find a way to make it happen. And we're just a great group of people that, you know, that care first about the other person. And, you know, what we get is just the fruit of how hard we work and how well we treat people. Again, I want to um, say thank you, Neil, for, for being with us today. For those of you who are listening, this was Neil Anderson, doTERRA Diamond in North Carolina, um, who is a master at sharing. And I, I hope you enjoyed what you heard today. And if you did, go ahead and share this video with your team so it can help them improve as well. Till next time, this has been Jordan with Tips from the Top.